Hello, and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tech Exec Podcast, where we triple your impact per engineer. As always, I'm your host, Aviv Ben Youssef, advisor and consultant to tech executives worldwide. And our subject today is cocooning. Before we get to that, I'm going to remind you, about 24 hours from the release of this episode, I'm having the fourth live session talking about my upcoming book. So if you want to hear the content before it is shared anywhere else, and if you want to ask me questions live, it's free. Join me. It's going to be fun. It's business formal. Well, I'm going to be business formal. You can wear whatever you want. It's a webinar, but the link is in the show notes and I'm waiting to see you there. Now let's talk about cocooning. Having worked with companies of all sizes from a handful of people to public companies and having seen some of those companies as they evolve, I think that many executives fall on a spectrum. On the one end, there are those who are entirely accessible. I've talked with C-level executives at public companies that are easily reachable. You can email them, text them. They're going to reply to you. They're going to schedule time with you solely by themselves, like grown-ups, and you can communicate with them. Basically, most of their company can just reach out to them if needed. And all the way on the other end of the spectrum, there are those who put up these walls. They have the executive assistant, the virtual assistant, the Calendly links, where essentially it feels like you can't get a hold of that person. And many of them feel like they're just doing this to make it easier on people. They feel like they are trying to protect their time, manage their time better, or even be more accessible because it's a lot easier to schedule time using the link than try and reach out to them. I can understand all of that, but this episode is about letting you know that you're in fact establishing a cocoon around you if this is what you're doing. And I find it funny that people with four direct reports feel the need to have this VA where people who are managing under them, hundreds of people, can manage without it. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have an assistant. I am saying that you should be very aware of how you're utilizing their services and what sort of message this sends to your employees, to your peers, and to everyone around you. Now, for example, picture an engineer in your company that has an issue. Do you feel like that person is likely to just let you know as they're seeing you walking the corridor, if they know that every time people ask to talk to you, you just refer them to the VA and tell them to find a slot? Do you imagine that your so-called open-door policy is going to be well used if people feel like you're always so busy and what you're sending them, the messages you're sending them, is that whatever they have is usually not important enough, not urgent enough, and can wait? The bottom line is that as an executive, you do need to protect your time, and I've talked about it in countless episodes here, but there are ways of getting to it. Establishing this cocoon where you are extremely hard to get to unless someone is within your inner circle is not the right way to go as the team is growing. If you want to have chutzpah, if you want people to speak up to you, to let you know what's going on because you're not able to see everything in your organization, if you want to see how people actually think, if you want to see innovation happening in the moment and not here in retrospect, after you're retrospecting a failed project in, a, in the postmortem, that, oh yeah, we could have done that. If you want to avoid all of those, if you want to leverage your people's communication, you have to model the right behavior. You have to be accessible. If you find that people are abusing your time, you can address that specifically. You can say that you have specific days where you're blocking your time. If you see that things are taking more than a couple of minutes in the corridor, you can tell them to slack you, to find some time. And for example, whenever I'm talking with executives and we're trying to find the time, I usually say here like a handful of times it's worked for me. And if it's easier for you, you can send me your magic link or you can use my magic link and schedule a time. You can do something similar. You can say, I'm busy right now and I'd like to give this my full attention. How about you talk to me tomorrow morning or if you'd rather send me a few slots 
or check my calendar or talk to the VA, you know, give them some options and show them that you're available, you're accessible, and you want to talk to them as soon as possible. It's just ridiculous how sometimes I have a meeting with someone just postponed day after day after day after day because the VA keeps shuffling things around. And then I just pick up the phone to the CEO and say, hey, do you want to talk or not? And then magically, we find time to talk within two hours. And this is me feeling very comfortable talking to my clients. This is not likely something that your employees are always going to be doing. So be aware of that and prevent the cocoon from forming around you. Because when a caterpillar does that, a nice butterfly emerges. But when executives do that, you just end up being more and more siloed and nothing pretty emerges. I can promise you that from experience. That's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. If you haven't yet, do subscribe to my newsletter. It's the best newsletter online for tech execs. And it's where you're going to find out about next live videos. So check it out. And the link for this week's live video is also in the show notes. Thank you. Talk soon.